the basic premise for us was that we uh, absolutely must not expect to receive any kind of <coughs> rental premium for these buildings. Um, Grey building X must sit next to green building Y and everything else being equal, we would uh, expect our occupiers to be paying no more, and in fact, paying a bit less, ideally, because our energy uh, requirements are so much lower. And we think there will be more of a, um, a loyalty between us and our occupiers, um, probably born about through the, um, the engagement early on, um, taking them through the process, and the ongoing in-use support as well. So. Um, uh, the size of the businesses uh, we're talking to varies enormously. So, uh, you know, on one hand, we're having some interesting discussions with large occupiers, multi-sited nationals, um, such as Virgin Media, who are spread around the country, um, want to tackle their emissions across all of their buildings. But equally, you know, we'll come down to much smaller occupiers who might represent some of your client base, who know that they want to do something about reducing their carbon footprint, but so far haven't really been given any direction on how they should do that. So if we're able to say to them, come to a low carbon workplace building and it will do X, Y, and Z, and you can use that, and the certification that will come with that from the Carbon Trust in any of your external communications around your carbon management, that might persuade you that the, the wrapping is gonna be uh, of benefit and value to you in the future. Bill, can I ask, um, what do you think, um, what more can be done for occupiers and do you think they will ever start paying a premium um, in rent for um, sustainable, sustainable properties? First of all, to, to Duncan's point, I, I certainly uh, take the view that the, the efforts being made to address sustainability are broadly proportionate to the size of, of companies. You know, I certainly agree again with the comment about it, it starts with the occupier, unless you can do something that, that meets the occupier needs, which might be about void rates, it might be about um, rental levels, um, it might be about a happy relationship that ends in a reletting and a, an extension of a lease. You know, you, you will have problems as a landlord. If you ignore those things, you do that, you do so at your peril. Unless a tenant can see there's a financial incentive of some form or other, which is either imposed externally or to do with the market, then I'm not sure that their behaviour is going to move in the direction we'd like to see it, it move. Government has its role to play there. And through time, I think it will be a journey and an evolution here. Through time, I think Occupy... Um, behaviour will change and ultimately I think greener buildings will, will be, in net terms, on average, will be winners. Chris, what advice can you give for um, smaller companies um, or smaller uh, property and construction companies um, tackling this issue? First of all, I think a lot of the work that we've been doing um, suggests that awareness, straight awareness, is, is an issue. Uh, and there's a big gap to be closed um, in, in respect of people knowing what they can do, where they can save money by simply doing things like switching, switching equipment off, making sure time clocks are set, things of that nature. There's a big uh, gap between them um, even knowing that they can do it and doing it to actually identify places where people without any expenditure can save money from day one. And I, and I think that's one of the messages that's got to get through to the, the SMEs. There are big opportunities here to aggregate up um, um, opportunities. So, is, so, it's, so is, on the supply side, the construction industry can actually bring products to part marketplace where perhaps it, uh, construction companies will work on a whole raft of buildings in a particular area at one time, for example. So actually just by bringing together multiple opportunities, you get the economies of scale, which can normally only be enjoyed by the really big companies. Uh, so I think it's a change in those practices and I think from the public sector's point of view, um, again, uh, encouraging through policy opportunities of that nature such that people can work collectively as communities in areas and, and I mean uh, um, as, as business communities yeah. in areas. I think there are big opportunities to be made here again by creating economies of scale. Okay. Both from your perspective and from the RSCS's perspective, Duncan, what, what's the, um, the guidance and the thinking on sustainable properties? as opposed to um, unsustainable ones, for want of a better word? I don't see that there is anything discernible in the market at the moment between that which is a green building and that which isn't in terms of valuation. Valuers have certainly moved forward a long way in understanding some of the issues. Those issues are still to be put into practice, and it's going to be one of education as to what do we expect the valuers 
to be actually be doing, to me, they have to be able to look at the buildings and say, here's a building that could go obsolete. What sort of things do I have to take into account in order to prevent it becoming more obsolete? Because that, to me, is the greatest risk that we have to our building stock at the moment. Those that meet the green agendas, they will have less void periods, they'll have the occupiers wanting to stay in them for longer, uh, and they will be much easier to manage. And that's where the valuer has got to be educated in order to uh, factor in properly what do you do to stop these buildings going into obsolescence too quickly.